Hi, my name is Jennifer Hand. I'm a dermatologist at Mayo Clinic, and I'd like to review a few important points about acne that I've learned over the years from talking with patients. First, acne is so common that it is considered a normal part of the teenage years. Infrequent, tiny red bumps usually appear as one of the first signs of puberty. Patients often ask me, what is the main cause of acne? In acne, multiple factors work together. First, the sex hormone levels in adolescence fluctuate wildly. A birth control pill can help to even out these hormone levels in females. Second, skin cells block pores. Normally, skin cells are shedding constantly and it isn't noticeable. In acne, the skin cells stick in the pore openings and clog them. The third factor is bacteria, which irritate and infect the skin. Genetics also likely plays a role. In order to tell if acne is beginning on your skin or in a child, the first sign to look for is a blackhead. A blackhead or comedone tells you that blocked pores are contributing to the problem. Children aren't usually in the habit of washing their faces, so the most important first step for acne is to wash the face with soap and water twice daily. I try to convey to kids, when the hormones hit, you've got to commit. Some people do develop more severe acne. Severe types can include pustules, also called whiteheads, red bumps, and large, painful, scarring cysts. Most people, though, develop only color changes in the skin that will always eventually clear without help. Permanent scars only will result from depressions in the skin or bumps in the skin, which can cast a shadow. The good news is that more treatments than ever before are available to remove scars, but it's still considered better to prevent them if possible. Makeup can affect acne. Heavy makeups can block pores. Makeups that are mineral-based and powderier are considered better for the skin and can even promote healing in some cases. Squeezing is generally not considered to be helpful because it can increase the size of a scar. There are some tools on the market, such as a comedone extractor, that can be used if it is very clean and used very gently to remove the contents of a small, uncomplicated whitehead if needed. Patients often ask about natural treatments. Dermatologists tend to be very cautious about natural treatments because some, especially those from plants, can cause people to become itchy and allergic. Use of blue light, though, which is in the visible spectrum, has been approved by the FDA and is available as a small device that can be used at home without a prescription. In terms of simple treatments, using soap and water to wash the affected area twice daily has good sh studies showing it's effective. I always try to remember that all skin diseases are more serious than they appear because they affect how people view themselves and how they interact with other people. Most often, treatment of the acne to make the appearance better is enough to help with sad emotions or depression. But as with any medical condition, psychological treatment to help a person cope can do a world of good. Signs that a person needs more help would be someone who won't leave home due to acne. Another sign would be someone who is constantly thinking about their acne and criticizing themselves, even if their acne is very mild. Or sometimes a person can pick at their acne lesions and can't stop, leaving lots of scabs, and they might need extra counseling or help. I think the most important message is that if you have acne, simple treatments are available that have been shown to work. If you would like to make an appointment or find more information, please visit mayoclinic.org.